Welcome back. I'm Beth, and today I'll be sewing an outfit for Blythe. I often browse the dolls and doll clothing available on AliExpress, though I rarely buy any pre-made clothing. I noticed a few listings by the store yesterday, which caught my attention because they looked so vintage and detailed. I could see in the description that the listing was actually for a kit, and that you have to make it yourself. I decided to try one out and to review it for myself. This isn't a sponsored video, they don't know me, I just bought it because I like it. The kit arrived in a padded envelope and in a cute plastic folder with a snap fastening. I think that's really nice. It'll be great to keep things together in as I work on it. I see a bag of trimmings and thread and other things. And a bag of what looks like loose tea leaves. Then there's the fabrics. They all look just like the photos on the listing and feel lightweight and are very pretty. Finally, the pattern and instructions. There are a few sheets of paper with the pattern templates and Chinese writing. Initially, I expected these to include some sort of link to video instructions, but I couldn't see anything like that. So I went back to the shop listing to see if instructions are mentioned anywhere, but also found nothing. I will use the Google Translate app to write down what all this text is and see if any assembly tips are included. I jot down all the relevant information directly onto the pattern pieces. There's the pants, which specify where to sew pin tucks and where to place decorative lace. Also the socks. They all refer to the fabric types by a letter code. The apron straps include seam allowance, but I don't think anything else does. The apron top includes a drawing of the suggested embroidery pattern. The apron skirt is to be cut on the fold, and it specifies needing to add a 5mm seam allowance. There's the decorative apron piece, and a template of a bobbin shape, which is supposed to be cut out of felt. The dress skirt is similar to the apron one, and here are the bodice pieces. There are some guides to the grain line direction and where to overlock edges. Also, needing to add the five millimeter seam allowance. There's the collar, the sleeves, and most importantly, the guide to which fabrics match which letters. Finally, the hat, with markings of where to place the trim. I decided to draw in the seam allowance directly wherever there was space around the template to add it. Then I cut out my paper pieces. For the pieces that were too close together for that, I copied them onto tracing paper and added the seam allowance around them there. For the bodice back and collar, I only cut one of each since they will be mirrored. I also wrote onto each template piece which fabric type it was for to help me sort them all out. For the larger templates of the skirts, I just manually added in the seam allowance onto the fabric before I cut them out. Here I've actually already cut and fray checked all my fabric pieces. I was really happily surprised to find that there's easily enough fabric to make this whole set twice. 
and still have fabric left over. I think that's really great. OK, let's look at what else is included. To put into the apron pocket, there's some gingham fabric. Just cut it and fold it to size. There's also felt to cut a little bobbin shape and a ribbon to. This lace is for the bottom of the apron. There's also scissors, buttons and a button charm. For the dress, there's a long lace piece for the hem and sleeve cuffs. Narrow red ribbon for the sleeves and also for the legs of the pants, which are like bloomers. Also, for the waist of the pants, is a piece of elastic. And this wide piece of white lace for the cuffs. The socks are simple and just use stretchy jersey fabric. I'll fold and sew the upper seams, then fold them in half and sew the sides. I've got my collar traced, ready to sew on the curved outline, then cut out and turned through. And here we have embroidery threads in all the colours needed to match the design in the photos. There's even reels of thread included and a needle, although to be honest, the needle snapped about halfway through. For the hat, there's a few things. These little flowers, some long narrow lace for the ties. This patterned trim goes where the markings on the pattern show. And the elasticated lace goes round the front of the hat. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's start with uh, the socks and the little apron piece. Okay, here's my socks. I backstitched the upper hem so they're still stretchy but I machine sewed the rest. Very nice. Always handy to have socks. I've hemmed the apron and added the lace to the bottom. I also sewed the collar while I was there. This little piece of ribbon is folded in at each side and sewn on to make a little pocket. Once sewn, I'll come back with red thread for a decorative running stitch. Oh, and I cut the little felt ribbon shape too. Here's my running stitch. Top three sides for the apron, bottom three sides for the pocket. Next, I can sew on the ribbon and button charm. Oh, here's my little gingham fabric bolt. I cut and folded it, then stitched it here to hold it closed. These little scissors are so adorable. Here's the little felt bobbin shape. I'll just wrap red thread around it gently for decoration. Here's all the pocket contents. I'll just need these wooden buttons to attach it to the pinafore skirt later. OK, next I'll put together the pants or bloomers. I copied over the lines where the lace will go and just the lines where I need to fold the fabric for the pin tucks. I'll slightly gather and sew this lace to the hems too. I think this narrow lace for the hat is also used here. It's quite a long piece. Once I've added these and done the pin tucks, I'll sew the legs at the front crotch seam, then fold the waist to make a channel for the elastic. Then I'll close the back side and finish off by sewing the inseam. Here's a better look at the leg detailing. And here they are complete. 
Before I did the inseam, I remembered to gather the lace about halfway up and added on the red ribbon detail. Right, next I'll make the dress. I'll need to cut out and turn through the collar pieces. I've got outer and lining body pieces, they'll be joined at the shoulders. And the sleeves will have lace trim sewn on and be gathered at the cuffs, then red ribbon sewn on too. And the skirt, which needs lace trim, and I noticed in the photos has a running stitch of red thread too. My bodice with the collar glued temporarily. The lining goes on and I'll sew round the back and neckline before turning to the inside. And the bodice with sleeves. The cuffs are gathered and red ribbon added before closing in at the sides. The lining is partial but looks nice and neat inside. My skirt is gathered using two rows of straight stitch and I just need the red running stitch before it's joined to the bodice. Oh, hello. My cat Sushi has come to keep me company for a while. She sometimes visits my desk briefly, but stayed longer today because my daughter has a friend over. She's avoiding them. I like the lace they used for this trim. The regularly spaced holes in it make it easy to keep my hand stitches even. With the exception of the tiny press studs, which are included too, by the way, my dress is finished. The set is coming together nicely. Next up, I'm going to embroider the front of the pinafore apron dress. I probably should have sewn this before I cut the fabric. I could have put it in a hoop. It's fine though. I did my best to copy the design using three strands of thread. I think two might have looked better in hindsight. I folded in and stitched the straps and pinned them between the two sides of the pinafore top. I'll sew round the top, then turn it out. Here it is, all ready for the skirt. It will be hemmed on three sides and gathered along the waist. I'm really pleased with how full both these skirts are. They're so cute. I tucked and folded the skirt into the open waist of the pinafore top. I like pulling out the lower gathering thread when it's done. Very satisfying. There. Now the straps need to be sewn down and some detail and a snap added to the back. Oh, I can also sew on the apron piece. Finally, the hat. This is nice and simple. Three sides are hemmed, trims added, then it's folded in half and sewn up the back. This lace will go along the front, then this nice trim. I'll close the back, cut this lace in half and sew it to the front sides. Finally, I'll glue on these flowers to one side. And here it is. I think it's lovely. I really like this style of hat. I decided to use two of the four tiny buttons that came with the kit here, since I couldn't see where else they should be used. The other two I used in the back of the pinafore apron. 
so the hat completes the set. The last finishing touch will be to use the loose leaf tee that comes with the set. But I'm not having a cuppa. I'll use it to tea stain and slightly discolour all the clothes. This makes them look more vintage and used. Before I take you to the kitchen, I want to say thank you to my patrons and to welcome our newest members there. Thank you, Billy and Tracy. I really appreciate your support and I hope you're enjoying the extra content shared there. Okay, time to make some tea. I dampen the clothes first, then dunk them in the tea. I leave it for a while, maybe 20 minutes, I don't want them too dark. Then I drain and rinse all the clothes well. I squeeze the excess moisture out with a towel, then arrange each piece nicely to dry. This really helps settle the folds in your fabric. I used two mannequin bodies to wear my clothing as it dried, but you could lay them flat or hang them up. Finally, they're dried. As you can see, I've chosen my model already. I'll be using my lightly customised Deer Forest Deer because she has an Obitsu 24 body. This is the specific body type that the pattern has been created for. As well as her new body, my deer has an experimental neck joint and I gave her two new sets of eye chips. These beautiful green ones and these dark brown ones too. They've replaced the pink and orange originals. I'll get her dressed now in all these layers. The socks are really a nice length. I love these bloomers. They were a little long on the original Blythe body of my mannequin, but perfect here. I found the waist of the dress a little snug, but perhaps I placed my snaps a little too far in. And the pinafore apron is perfect. Here's how I decorated the back. A little brush of her hair and I tie on the hat. Goodness, how perfect is this set for me? It's so fairy tale, folklore styled, I just love it. I especially love the sewing themed extras. I can't resist sewing related minis. Be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what you think of the finished set. Before I set up her final shots, she needs some red leather boots and a sweet little acorn pochette too. Both I made myself. Well then, would I recommend that you buy this set? It's a yes, but I would say only if you have a little sewing experience already. If you're comfortable with figuring things out yourself and know how to sew bodices, sleeves and trousers already, then definitely yes. I think this set is ideal for people who can already sew, but perhaps lack certain materials or the inspiration to put together a coherent set like this by themselves. I took a few screenshots of the outfit from the shop listing and looked back at them frequently throughout the sewing process, and I would recommend that you do the same. I love that they're generous with the fabric and that you could easily make it all twice, although you might have to source more of the trimmings to go with it. So if the price is right, then definitely give this set a try. <laughs> it's a yes to yesterday. <laughs> oh, cheesy. Well, that's it from me today. I hope you found this interesting and useful if you want to put together this set yourself. I will leave the link in the video description below to where I got mine. And I look forward to reading your lovely comments. Please give the video a like as well if you enjoyed it. Until next time, 
Thank you all so much for watching. Bye!